This is the former Nazi death camp at Treblinka. In the 15-month period from the 23rd of July 1942, some 900,000 people were killed here. Quite horrific and uh, huge numbers in a relatively short amount of time and made even more horrific when you think that there were times, particularly the winter 42-43, when there were few transports coming here. People who were murdered here were nearly all murdered by gas. The gas chamber was very close to where I am now standing. In fact, there was older gas chambers, the first gas chambers probably somewhere around there and the new ones probably in the region of where I am standing now. Some people, of course, were also shot at a place they called the Lazarette, which was down there. Uh, Lazarette means field hospital. Um, the problem, of course, was what to do with all of these bodies, 900,000 bodies to get rid of. And uh, initially, the bodies were buried. They were put into uh, pits here, they had a mechanical digger, they had two mechanical diggers to actually do the digging and the people were actually put into the pits there. The earth here uh, is a mix, very sandy and it's a bit sand mixed with loam. It's not very good for agriculture. Agricultural land around here is what's called, it's in Polish, it's a grade six, which is the worst possible. And you can't really do much with it, uh, maybe potatoes or um, you can, grits, I think the word is in English. Uh, I can't remember the word, whatever. Anyway, it's, it's only poor, uh, poor types of crops which will actually uh, grow there. Now, the, uh, the, the diggers obviously could sort of dig very, very deeply. Now, um, the Nazis decided to burn the bodies. And that brings me... Uh, to over here where we have got a um, symbolic pyre and now the burning of the bodies started at Kulmhof, Helmen and Adnerim in April of 1942. It, uh, the commandant at Auschwitz went down to uh, Kulmhof then to see how it was done and uh, that was in the beginning of September 42. Now, the Nazis started the war with mass killings. At Pieszniczna Wielka, uh, north of Wejerowo in Poland, there was mass killings uh, from September 1939. These people were put into pits where they were buried. Ironically enough, they were also the last people, I think, or just about the last to be dug up and burnt. So this huge area here where there were these pits um, and the, the bodies were dug up. Now in Treblinka they started burning the bodies in 19... Um, the winter of 42, 43. It was around December 42. Probably a similar time in Sobibor. As far as Belgets was concerned, all of the victims were buried and then they started to dig them up, possibly in January of 43, might have been December 42. Um, I did considerable amount of interviews with people about the burning of the bodies there because everybody knew about it for a very wide radius. Now, as far as uh, Treblinka is concerned, uh, the town or the village, I should say, of Treblinka, or where the station is, is about four, four and a half kilometres from here. And the locals there in Cloud Landsman's film, sure, they said they depended on the wind, with what way the wind was actually blowing. Now, the reason for the bodies being dug up and then burnt, for me, is not absolutely clear, but I'm going to offer you some uh, ideas, and uh, which which may or may not be correct. Now, uh, in the winter of 42, 
a Heydrich uh, called Paul Blobel. Blobel had headed an Einsatzgruppen and uh, he'd uh, sort of invalided himself. And uh, Heydrich, who clearly didn't like him, said to Blobel something along the lines of, uh, how's your stomach? Well, I've got, if it's strong, then I've got something that's going to make you feel really sick. You're going to burn the bodies. And at this moment, from the, the huge amount of Einsatzgruppen killings that had taken place in the, um, after the invasion of the Soviet Union, so in the, the second half of 41, these bodies had to be found, located, dug up and burned. And I think the reason for that was because the Soviets, in their counter-offensive as of December 41, had found evidence of Nazi crimes. Now here at Treblinka, we have this, which is representative of the, uh, the pyre. Sometimes it's called the roast. I hate that word. It sounds, roast is, it sounds like, you know, like almost like a joke word. But the, the pyres are, are, were more or less at this time. And I, I think that the, the size, probably, this is quite an accurate um, rendering of it. Why didn't they start burning the bodies almost immediately in the Reinhardt death camps? Now that I can't give you an answer for. Um, I have this theory, which is the following. I might, might be completely wrong, but I believe this for some time, that the Nazis knew of the Katyn uh, murders in the autumn of uh, 42. Now, norm normally this was made public in April of 43, the reason it, I think was made public then was because they, uh, uh, the, the front, it was clearly stalemate on the front, is that this was after Stalingrad, a major German defeat, but it was uh, also after the um, Third Battle of Kharkiv, which was a major Soviet defeat. So it was more or less a stalemate then, and there was clearly no chance of getting a peace between Nazi Germany and Soviet Union, which was attempted. And um, so therefore, I think was that they used the capital that they had. And as a political move, um, this was quite good because it led to the Soviet Union and Poland breaking up diplomatic re relations. The Soviet Union, which had killed these officers, then broke off um, diplomatic relations with the country that where the, the, so the soldiers were the victims. Anyway, um, I think the two things might be linked. I mean, I might be completely wrong, uh, but that to me sort of makes sense. Why dig up bodies in, uh, for example, um, and burn them in uh, places which were not all that far from the front? In the case of the Baba Yar killings, uh, they, there about 34,000 Jewish people were murdered in September of 41, almost immediately after the capture of Kiev, only a few, uh, few days really. And... Um, then it's a uh, oops sorry some some biting insect was on my foot uh the um so they only managed to actually finish destroying the bodies only uh, literally a few days before the soviets recaptured kiev so what they did clearly was they started as far east and they sort of then worked their way back. And I've done a video on Sonder Commander 1005, which uh, might uh, might be of interest if you're into this sort of thing. I'll, I'll put a link to it uh, below. Um, this is my theory anyways, why they then started uh, destroying the bodies by fire. I think, for example, in the case of Auschwitz, it was clear because there wasn't enough space to do it elsewhere and they did have industrial type um, crematorium uh, crematoria there whereas here it's done on a, the same way as it was but bodies were burnt four or five thousand years ago on a, on a pyre so uh, that's how I see it so uh, got the, I've got done a number of videos here from Treblinka Holocaust is my specialised specialist subject, so if you're interested in this sort of thing, then you might want to subscribe. So I do these location videos, but I also do more of a documentary type, and when I do the documentary type, it's uh, easier for me, because I can then check my facts and I, I can write things down 
whereas like now I'm just walking around speaking off the top of my head so I'm going to speak off the top of my head not only my ideas might be logical but uh, the I can forget things or, or make mistakes so um, but if I do make a mistake there, there's a comment that I pin my comment with putting the correction in there right so uh, if you're wondering what the, these stones represent the dead and on some of the larger stones we've got the names of the communities from which the victims came and uh, so that's uh, that's what this is this monument was put here in I think it was 1964 so it took another 40 years to do a similar type of monument at Beaujet and I think in Sobibor uh, I don't think they've finished it yet no I haven't been there for some time Here, there's not so many names as there is at the front. You can see one place though there is Jelechov, which uh, not so f in the Lublin district, very large Jewish uh, population, and we have the photographs uh, from the from the deportation, uh, which were taken. That's something I've been meaning to do a video on for ages, and I still haven't got around there. I think there's also something within Jewish thinking that a stone is permanent and um, this, this has uh, a meaning over things such as light, for example in the form of candles, uh, which are light uh, is there but it's temporary, I think, uh, or something along those lines. So thanks very much for watching and uh, all the best from me in Poland.